Today's podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Smart Deploy. Faster than Semantic goes to easier than SCCM. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD or stay around from a tale from Senior Thorant. <laughs> uh, you know, I've had a lot of long travel days in my life, right? Mm-hmm. We've all done this, you know, fly to Asia or something or like some overnight trip to Europe and then you have to get in a car and drive across the entire country of Ireland, which granted is the size of Rhode Island, but you know, yesterday was a long day. Yeah. Long day. Uh, how, where, where are you? I, I, I wanted to say you're in Guadalajara, even though I know you're not there. I just like saying it. <laughs> well, I am in the state of Guanajuato, uh, Guanajuato. We, and I'm in uh, San Miguel de Ende is the rough name of that. I'm probably not pronouncing it very well, but it's, um, I guess three to four hours, three and a half, four hours from uh, Mexico City, north and west. And how did how did you pick this place? Oh. It's a beautiful. Uh, did you see my photos? I mean, from no, uh, I haven't looked uh, at anything yeah, yet. Yeah, look, uh, it's it's an unbelievable place. It's beautiful. So there are all these um, places that Mex- Mexico calls uh, pueblos mágicos, which are beautiful colonial hill towns. And not, well, they're not always hill towns, but this is a hill town for sure. Um, and we wanted to go visit some of those. So we're going to visit at least two, maybe three on this trip. Uh, mm-hmm. We're also going to go to the town or city of Guanajuato itself, which is uh, also striking and really beautiful place. And maybe the Carataro. We drove by it on the way here, but, you know, we'll see. But yeah, yesterday was like a 5 a.m. wake up call, 6 a.m. in the car, 1030 flight. You know, so 90 minute drive to the airport, we mm-hmm. longer because we had to do long term parking, which is out in the middle of freaking nowhere. And then, you know, four to five hours to get here. An interminable <laughs> period of time getting the rental car. Dry, by the way, so you have to Mexico City uh, is is huge in ways that are hard to explain to people who live in the United States because our biggest cities do not compare in scope or mm-hmm. size to this place. It's it's astonishing. I mean. You could fit all of Paris and London into Mexico City and still not fill up the place. It's crazy. And the airport is kind of on the outskirts of town, kind of, because really the it just spreads. It just goes and goes and goes. So we have to get out of Mexico City first. And the, the, <laughs> driving, no, nobody should ever drive in Mexico City, like ever. And um, just in the half an hour it took to get kind of around the airport area, uh, my vehicle was almost struck four times by drivers just darting around, and, and it was unbelievable. But it, the funny thing is, dude, I if you anyone who follows me on Instagram knows I complain a lot about the drivers in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Once you get out into Mexico and you're on the highways, the drivers here are the best drivers I have ever experienced in my life in the world. It is the dream, right? So if you've ever driven a long distance, uh, or any distance, like on a highway in the United States, you know, if you're trying to make time, like I usually do, you get in the left lane, you want people to get out of the way, and they never do, and you flash your lights, and you drive past them on the right like an idiot, because there's nothing else you can do about it. And um, that never happens here, dude. Everyone gets out of the way. Everyone. People will pull up behind you. If they think you're not going to get out of the way, they'll flash their lights or put their blinker on. And I always get out. I'm, I'm, I'm actually a really conscientious driver. I always get out, out of the way. And the entire three and a half, four hour drive to here was like that. Like it was unbelievable. I, I, I have never experienced the volume of good driving that I saw yesterday in my life. In fact, I might have seen more yesterday than I've seen in my entire life combined. Like incredible. And then you get here and it's just like Mexico City. It's not, you know, built up. Mm-hmm. But you, what you have are these little one, well, it's two, one lane in each direction. And then like a breakdown lane that could fall off a cliff. There could be a culvert there for water. There could be a, a barrier or whatever, but it's only been wide enough for about half a car. And they treat it here like it's two lanes in each direction. And people are passing each other with enough room for one and a half cars, but there are two cars there. And it is the, the, the last 20 minutes of this drive and the first half hour were among the most harrowing I've ever experienced in my life. Um, but we, I mean, door to door, this trip was probably, I think I said, it was either 14 or 15 hours a long, it was just a long, long day, man. long day, but you know, you get here and it's, I mean, it, it, it's this, look, look at the photos, dude, uh, th- this town city, I don't know what you call it, but is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And the only downfall for it really 
is it's full of Americans. <laughs> so, and it always has been. It's like an expat um, mm -hmm. destination, I guess. I don't know. Well, while you were playing Road Rash, Paul, things <laughs> were happening. Yes. Oh, the world continued without me? It did. That little sobering wake-up call I get every time I travel. So there's still, apparently, Windows 11 features that are coming that we have not mm. been dutifully informed about. Uh, yeah. Panos yesterday tweeted out a little video. Like he, I think he did this last week, right, with Snip and Sketch or whatever, and we all thought that was mm -hmm. dead now. Apparently, it's coming back to life or whatever they're doing. Oh, uh, I can. I think I can explain that, by the way. I, yeah. We talked about this on Windows Weekly. I, we can get to that later. But okay. go ahead. Well, Anyways, so... He tweeted out a feature with Focus Assist. Now, Focus Assist has been in Windows or whatever, but Spotify yeah. was integrated into the experience, like on the panel. So you pick 30 minutes mm -hmm. and then your playlists were right there and you just right. pick them. So there you go. Spotify looks like it might be integrated into Windows 11 in some capacity, at least music yeah, services. That's great. I, yeah. I, that's fine. I mean, when Microsoft did the deal with Spotify when they were getting rid of Groove Movie uh, Music Pass, I thought, you know, they should have done something with them around one drive storage and getting those songs into Spotify, something, some kind of partnership. And they never did. And um, that's cool. I, I, that's that's kind of an, I, I saw the headline or whatever. I didn't really I didn't have time. I, I, I've been awake for about 25 minutes. So mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of it here. But um, by the, the Snip and Sketch show. There, there are two very similar apps in uh, Windows 10, Snipping Tool, which I think is the one that Panos pr promoted the other mm -hmm. day. If you run Snipping Tool in Windows 10 today, you'll get an advertisement for Snip and Sketch. It tells you to move on to the new yeah. snipping experience, right? And so this is a way to create screenshots and crop them and, and maybe add text to them. Or, you know, if you have a pen, you can draw on it and stuff like that, right? So if you look at these apps, you can tell that uh, snipping tool. I'm having a hard time keeping in my head which yeah. one's which, but snipping tool is a, is a desktop application and snip and sketch is a UWP application. Oh, so it's interesting to me that in windows 11, even though in windows 10, they tried to push you to the other thing. Now they're going back to the original one. And if you look at the UI that Panos Panay showed on, mm -hmm. it is very clearly a, what we used to call a project reunion app, meaning it has a modern UI, but on top of the old app, which is a desktop app. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a way of bringing like the old style of app forward to the new platform. Um, and if you've seen any of the leaks, like uh, Microsoft Paint falls into this category. I have not seen one of Notepad, but there's no way they're not doing this to Notepad. The versions of those apps that it will eventually appear in Windows 11 are going to be just like that snipping tool app. They're the old desktop app, but with a refreshed new project reunion, uh, which is now called the Windows when app UI. SDK. Yeah. Uh, oh, WinUI. Yeah, yeah, WinUI. Actually, it's even a better term because it's just the UI. Yeah, we, we'll call it a WinUI 3. Actually, that's a much better term. But but they did it with, you know, it's like that project reunion set of technologies. Um, and I, I think we're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff. So I think that's kind of interesting, you know, for whatever that's worth. Well, we will have some more interesting things to talk about here after a brief message from our friends <laughs> over at Smart Plus. The modern workplace requires modern IT tools. When legacy solutions like Ghost, MDT, and Acronis Snap Deployed no longer fit the bill, try Smart Deploy's modern endpoint management solutions. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD to get started with your free exclusive software worth over $570. So also, while you were playing Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, there was other news, and it, it, yeah. it, it, it dovetails very nicely into what you just said. So have you okay. seen the OneNote news? After we just completed. Yeah, I, I, I saw that too. And, and and by the way, that one I looked at because of what we just talked about. And I I, I can't, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, honestly, the new, uh, so what Brad's saying, I'm sorry. There's a, there are two OneNotes today as yep. you know, on desktop, right? The Windows 10 version and then the classic desktop version that used to and now it does again ship as part of Office or Office or Microsoft 365. Um it looks cleaner and whatever, but it still has that full ribbon, right? So I guess the sheer number of commands in OneNote necessitates that or something. It's it's kind of too bad that thing couldn't get a a WinUI. Maybe it is WinUI, by the way. I don't actually mm -hmm. know that. But a WinUI looking or compact ribbon type thing like we had on the Windows 10 version of, yep. of OneNote. And, of course, we, you know, we just talked about OneNote, uh, I don't know, two days ago. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, and it's interesting that that news kind of came out when it did, but I... I what, if, what if I as, told you, Paul, that I heard that there was some OneNote news coming and that's kind of what triggered me to not... Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, it was coincidence, <laughs> like, somewhat 
coincidental. I heard that there was one note news coming. I was like, you know what? I can't get into this app. And then, well, and, and, and randomly, because you brought it up, I mentioned that I had heard from someone very high up in one note. Uh, this is a couple of years ago about th they were looking into making a simpler mm -hmm. version of the app. I think understanding that with a lot of people using note taking apps on mobile, they don't necessarily have something competitive uh, because it's just such a big and heavy app. It's just, yep. it, it, it's too much in many ways. It's, a, you know, it's a Microsoft app. I mean, unfortunately that's what happens. God forbid something Microsoft makes is successful. They, keep, they just keep, no, I mean, they keep piling it on, right? I mean, that's yeah. what happens. Um, so, yeah, I need to look at it a little bit more, but that that was the one thing in my feed I actually did click into before the show. I didn't have time to read the whole thing. I just wanted to see what it looked like, and I was like, oh, it's not quite yeah. what I was hoping for, but it interesting. So here's here's the, it's probably even worth more than a million dollar question to Microsoft at this point after how much they've invested into it. Yeah. What, Paul Thurot, is going to be the last UWP standing from Microsoft. Oh boy! Because we've already OneNote's done, <laughs> Snip and Sketch yeah. is done. What's going well? Think about the major. So, by the way, um, ironically, sadly, if, if if you go back to the UWP days when it was an ongoing concern and this was the thing, and you know, could you point to an example of a good UWP app? I would have said, yeah, Groove is a great UWP app. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Groove is useless today, right? So the thing is still included in Windows um, because I guess they need a media player or something, but it's it's so chopped down from what it used to be. It's kind of hard to, it's just like a vestigial leg or something, yeah. you know. Um, movies and TV falls into this category as well. Not that it's a, uh, abandoned, it's, it's, it is in fact going forward. So I, I wonder if that just, I mean, why would you, what would you do to that? You gonna rewrite the app that probably no, almost no one uses? Um, and then what? Uh, that's about it, isn't it? I mean, what else is? I think those are the only major ones, right? Yeah, I, I don't think Paint 3D is Paint 3. I can't remember or not. Paint 3D was UWP, but it was pulled out. It's not going to be part of. Yeah, um, I mean, it's technically, it's you can still go download it, but it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I think that the fact that they're not including it in Windows gives you some insight into their intent with the app. Like I, I, and they'll prove me wrong by releasing a major update tomorrow. But I don't see. Paint 3D evolving in any major way, so they're they're pro they know they have some number of users. Uh, they get rid of you remember they used to have like a back end service and store and stuff and mm -hmm. get rid of all that. So I don't see that I don't see that changing. But yeah, you'd have to almost go through the start menu and look for. I guess I could. I, I'm not going to do it now. But you know, uh, yeah, like I said, Groove and movies and TV are the big ones that I can think of. Yep. Um, there was a time. Remember, everything was going to go in this direction. Office was going to be UWP. Oh, what about? Uh, what about the mail app? Oh no, you're right. Mail and calendar. Yeah, actually, those are actually those are those are the biggest because those are actually used by people. Yep. Those might be the most popular UWP apps there are. I would I would think they probably are. So those will have to be. I I would be shocked if those were not. You, you remember, you know, of course, you can take a UWP app and bring it forward with WinUI. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, that's not true. Um, let me think about this. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna get the names right. There, uh, whether it's Project Reunion itself or WinUI three specifically, those things as of today are not coming to UWP. I think. I think it's only one of those things. Uh, it's experimental or something like that. I need to look this up. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm afraid I'm miscommunicating something here. Um, there's some key part of Project Reunion that's not moving forward with UWP beyond an experimental thing, at least for today. Mm. So anyway, I, regardless of all the nonsense I just said, I, I, I think that those apps need to be completely redone. And I guess you would call them uh, Windows app SDK slash WinUI 3 apps, whatever, uh, desktop apps, right? I mean, yep. if you're a developer, you create a new, like, I can't get out Project Reunion, I still like that name, but if you create a new Project Reunion app, you have a choice or did anyway during the beta to go for uh, a desktop app or a UWP app. So it, it, they should be, I think they're going to have to redo those. Or make them web apps. I don't know. I mean, I bet. Remember, there's that one Outlook initiative that we heard about floating around. I bet it's. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. And, you know, Teams is moving from Electron to what? What's the thing Teams is moving to? Uh, React Native or React? I think so. Um, 
you know, some kind of web technology like that would work for those apps. When those, app, by the way, those apps, you know, everyone probably sort of remembers this. They date back to Windows 8. And mm -hmm. the first time they showed them off, they were actually still calling them Windows Live apps at the time. And they were made with web technologies. Like the Windows 8 versions of those apps were HTML and JavaScript and CSS. And, you know, because that was one of the ways yeah. you could create Windows 8. Um, I don't know how those have evolved or changed over time, but it, it you know, their very nature lends them toward a, a kind of web type thing, I would say. I mean, you can't, you can't in calendar create an, a local calendar. This is only attached to online accounts. Mm -hmm. So a lot of babbling there. I'm sorry. I'm like I said, I <laughs> blocked it yesterday, but uh, yeah, I, though, that's those are the biggest apps, uh, UWP apps, and they, I think that I think they're going to have to redo. I don't see those moving forward as they are. I just don't. I mean, but th those are that's a big change. It is a big change. So it'll be. I don't know. Everybody should go to Vegas, place your bets on the last UWP standing. <laughs> well, and also, wh what's the timing on any of this stuff, right? Yeah, it's... you get like we just got a bill last night, I guess, um, mm -hmm. that I'll download. It's epically slow connection today, and you see little tweaks and things and blah, 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 whatever. But like all the apps in Windows, Windows, whatever, Windows 10, Windows 11, I mean, they're on their own schedules. They could be updated at any time. And Microsoft yeah. has a rich history of dropping this stuff at the last second. Like um, with Windows Vista, I wrote that entire book. And then as it was heading to publication, they all of a sudden unveiled all the new icons with the glass icons and all that stuff. And that required us to retake every almost every screenshot in the whole book. And um, <clears throat> you could picture Microsoft doing something like that, you know, finalizing Windows 11, mm -hmm. by the way, this month, really, right? But the apps still get updated, updated, updated. And then by the time you're able to buy it on new computers, you know, in a mainstream way early next year, um, all of a sudden there are a bunch of new apps, you know, uh, or updated apps or whatever. I mean, I can picture that happening. Other things, Paul, that I can picture happening? <laughs> Is that today's podcast was brought to you by Smart Deploy, the first and only to offer Windows deployment from the cloud. Head on over to smartdeploy.com slash FRD, and we'll catch all of you right back here from the Taco Podcast on Monday. <laughs> this is like a long version of waking someone up and immediately asking them a question. <laughs> <laughs>